The year is 2022. We are living in a day and age where new games are coming out thanks to new technologies being discovered, developed, and used. However, as time goes by, the old games that we grew up with have shown their age, not just in visuals but in mechanics as well. The greatest problem, however, is as new games are being made and released, the old games find themselves in their current state with the same quality. Over time, the perseverance of old games becomes more and more of a problem to the point where people have no choice but to find alternate solutions to experience the games of old. To make this more apparent in order to provide clarity of this topic, I'll be breaking this down into three parts. Remasters and remakes, emulation, and backwards compatibility. Let's start from the top. Out with the old and in with the new, they always say. However, we must never forget the old games that we knew and grew up to love. Although we're no strangers when it comes to game collections, but increasing the quality of the old in addition to adding improvements is how remasters come to be. To better understand this, look no further than Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy, where the games not only look drop dead gorgeous, but with the inclusion of Coco being playable, adding a scrap level in Crash 1, fixing checkpoint boxes so that they say smash box progression, adding time relics in Crash 1 and 2, and creating a new level in Crash 3 Warped and Saint Trilogy is by far the best way to play these PlayStation classics. Of course, remasters aren't always what they seem as there are collections out there that are there for the sake of preservance or a move to another console with not much improvement. The Devil May Cry HD collection is a perfect example of this. Although the package includes Devil May Cry 1 through 3 with artwork, there are no improvements in the visuals, nor are there any improvements to the gameplay. So unfortunately, Devil May Cry 2 still maintains the brain dead enemy AI that fans know and hate. At least you can play the Devil May Cry games on future hardware, I guess. Another requirement that remasters need is accessibility. Not every game that we know has not received the remastered treatment, which is why if you look at the Dragon Ball Z Budokai HD Collection or Pac-Man World Repack, you'll notice some games missing. For the Budokai HD Collection, Budokai 2 is missing. The best idea I can think of as to why this is, is probably the content. According to a friend of mine, Dragon World, this game's story mode, wasn't the best as the game plays like a board game where Goku is the main character with a selection of characters by the player's choosing. Pac-Man World Repack only had World 1 and that's it. World 2 and World 3 are nowhere to be seen, which is a shame because World 2 is the best Pac-Man World game out there. I never played World 3, but I've seen some of the game in action. Shame this one wasn't included, which would have been beneficial for those that have yet to experience World 3, myself included. If Klonoa can have two games remastered in one package, then what was going on with Pac-Man World Repack besides legal issues with Ms. Pac-Man? Unfortunately, ports and remasters aren't guaranteed to provide the best experience when it comes to moving old games over to new hardware, either because the experience is exactly the same or there were no improvements to speak of. One more example of porting over games with no improvements to speak of is the modern Mega Man collections. The one that hurts me the most is the Mega Man X Legacy Collection. Split in two, the X Legacy collections have a total of four games, old trailers, artwork, the Day of Sigma OVA from the Mega Man X remake, Maverick Hunter X, and X Challenge, which is the worst part of this collection due to the lack of playtesting and high difficulties. The problem with this collection is what you see is what you get. None of these games have been improved. X1 still has slowdown, X3 still has zero issues where if Zero is defeated, he's never playable for the rest of the game, X4 still has the cheesy voice acting that people know and hate or love. X5 has no option to disable alias navigation. X6 is still X6 and X7 is still X7. X8, I saw no difference besides reduced load times. So yeah, X Legacy Collection is honestly not worth it, especially with there are ROM hacks that provide improvements worth seeking, such as the SA1 patch for X1 that it removes slowdown, the X30 project that adds Zero as a full playable character, the X4 Undone patch that provides the Japanese voices with subtitles and boss intro dialogue. <laughs> The X5 improvement patch that gives you the option to disable alias navigation and revise scrap pieces of music, and for X6, a tweak patch where you can customize the game to your liking, according to what it provides. ROM hacking is without a doubt a better method of remastering the game in terms of mechanics. Still, remasters are a necessity in this day and age, especially for those that have yet to experience their history. 
of course, sometimes a remaster isn't enough, as oftentimes old games would need a complete overhaul. I think this is the moment that people have been waiting for, so a better example of a remake than Final Fantasy VII. Personally, I have not played the original VII many because the visuals weren't that intriguing to me. But when I saw VII Remake in the trailers and finally saw the game in action, I thought to myself, yes, this is how the game should be in 2020. From the looks to the gameplay to the performance, VII Remake provided people like me, who had never played the original, a fulfilling remake experience that I personally keep coming back to. Hard mode aside. Cloud and his companions are like actual people and not this cheap looking toy you find in a dollar store. The people in this game are like actual people and the soundtrack would rival against the soundtrack in Final Fantasy XIII, which is my favorite so far. Perhaps if I were to play the original, I'd use a ROM hat that improves the visuals. No disrespect to those that played or grew up with the original, but... Oof. Of course, not every remake is justified in the eyes of the consumer. The Last of Us Part 1 was met with so much criticism to the point where people were calling it a cash grab. Those people are correct. Usually, a remake would have new visuals and a new method of playing the game. But The Last of Us Part 1 offers the exact same experience that you've been through in either the PS3 release or its remaster. What this remake does is break the rule of what remakes should be. A game changer. Part 1 is no different than the previous iterations and is made even worse here. Although the characters look more realistic, I honestly prefer the remaster as the characters look like they have more youth. Plus, Factions, the multiplayer mode, has been completely removed and was probably replaced with this remake's new features such as one-hit kills and speedrunning. Not really my cup of tea, and scrappy multiplayer was a stupid move. When exploring which remaster or remake is worth your time and money, be wary of what the game provides, as you might find something that can hinder your experience. Of course, remasters and remakes, for the most part, are fulfilling breaths of fresh air. Find something that works for you and stick with it. I have spoken in length about ROM hacks improving the old games, I think it's about time for me to speak of emulation, which is no doubt how people experience old games now. Because certain games have not been ported or remastered or remade, people have taken the liberty of providing emulators to play old games so that they're never swept away by the flow of time. After all, game companies also use emulators for game collections. Just look at the scam that is Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Three emulators in one package. Emulation also allows certain games not ported over to other countries to be played, so if you live in America and want to play Japanese games, sometimes you'll be in luck if there's an English translation patch for it. Even in this year, emulation has provided better methods of playing some of the modern games, mostly Nintendo. Of course, there are those who demonize emulation and took it to themselves to take down certain ROM sites. Nintendo is known for doing something like this and not everyone took that too kindly. In fact, due to Nintendo's lack of preserving their old titles, people have resulted to piracy and obtain games illegally. I can assure you that if Nintendo had the courtesy to archive their games commonly, piracy wouldn't have become a frequent issue. Unless there's a concrete solution to preserve old games to where piracy is just a bad memory, emulation is our future. It allowed old games to be experienced without the need to hunt down old consoles that are either being scalped or just hard to find. And with HD texture packs, old games can be given fresh coats of paint to make them look even better than they did before. When it comes to emulation, there are benefits, especially when people have a device called a Steam Deck, where you can turn this lovely portable device into an emulation monster. I gotta get me one of those. Backwards compatibility is without a doubt the most essential feature to console gaming, as new technologies are being made, so are new games. So how can old games benefit in the new age? Although PlayStation is suffering with backwards compatibility due to resulting to streaming the games and locking them behind a paywall via PlayStation Plus, Xbox has taken the time to add games to be playable in their Xbox One and Series systems. Well, most of them. Although Xbox has done an amazing job by adding old Xbox games to the Xbox One and Series X library, the same could not be said for the games that weren't added. After the announcement that Xbox would be ending their backwards compatibility service, it left the minority of people unfulfilled for those that were hoping to see their favorite game on more powerful hardware. Xbox is still supreme in terms of backwards compatibility, while PlayStation hasn't fully grasped the concept. 
Not every PlayStation 2 game was added to the PlayStation 4, which is why people either result to emulation or result to the HD collections out there. Nintendo used to be fully supportive of backwards compatibility with their old consoles, specifically the Wii and Wii U, but after the release of the Nintendo Switch, the problem rose once again. Though the problem was solved by re-releasing Wii, Wii U, and GameCube titles and naming them deluxe versions, the problem with these re-releases were the pacing. In the beginning, Nintendo has ported or made sequels to Wii U titles, but as time marched on, the re-releases became less and less frequent, which again led to people to use emulators. The wait is excruciating for those who had a Wii U to see Wii U games remastered for the Switch. So it's no surprise that people are constantly typing in their comments in old Nintendo trailers saying that the game needs to be on the Switch or have people constantly make prediction videos about Nintendo Directs. Personally, I feel that Nintendo will have to re-release their game to the Switch eventually, especially since they're closing both the Wii U and 3DS eShops. For those that never played any of the 3DS or Wii U titles, I hope that you take the time to experience those games for yourselves by any means necessary. Times, they are a changing, Bob Dylan once said, and the gaming industry is no exception. With new experiences to explore and games to play, we can never forget the old games that we all grew up with and wish to see in this current era, but the problem persists as to how the games we love will have their own spotlight. Like the old saying goes, only time will tell. We may never know for sure when the old games will have their new breath of fresh air, especially for those that have yet to make memories of their own. Old games that we hold dear to our hearts are treasures that can't be replaced, and seen in a new light, when done correctly, would be a sight to see. To archive the games of the past for the next generation is more than crucial in the upcoming times, especially when new consoles are being made and PC gaming is becoming more and more frequent. Game preservation is becoming more demanding especially from those that never played classic games before. Until there's a method where everyone can experience the games that we grew up with and grown to love, the best we got is what we find and what the creators put out. Hello everyone, this is Joe Brun, and I want to thank you all all so much for seeing this video all the way until the very end. And if there's a game out there that you grew up with, and if it's a game that you want to see in this day and age, then spread the word and share it with anyone else that might be interested in it, whether it be a friend or a family member. And also leave your positive and negative comments in the comment section underneath this video. And tell me all about the game that you want to see in this day and age that you want to see in future hardware and PC. Until the next one, stay safe out there because you don't know what's going to happen out there. <laughs>